So I finally got around to making this video and all I got to say is how surprised I am about how cheap some of these cars are, especially considering how powerful some of them are. I'm not here to waste your time with a long drawn out intro, so let's get started. The Volvo S60R was designed with the intent of being a competitor to the BMW 3 Series. Volvo wanted their own fast sports saloon, and sure, it never will quite be a BMW, but it still stands out as something of its own. With how cheap you can find these on the market nowadays, it'd be a sin not to consider it in a different light. The S60R features a turbocharged 2.5 liter i5 engine. Yeah, you heard me right, a 5 cylinder engine. So if you didn't think the car wasn't odd enough, it just got odder. This engine is putting out 300 horsepower and with all wheel drive it launches itself from 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. The appearance of this car is very muted and subtle, so it appears rather boring. That's not bad though, in fact that makes it all the more perfect. If you're looking for a sleeper, you should add this to your shopping list. Performance aside, this car's interior is really well done. Nothing too extraordinary, but far from disappointing. Most of these can be found around 7 to 9 grand, so for that price, it's a nice hidden gem that definitely deserves to be checked out. Speaking of BMWs, the E46 M3 is another great car to look at under 10 grand. Blah blah blah, I can already hear people typing in the comments about how unreliable old beamers are. And you know what? You guys aren't exactly wrong. I'm aware of this fact and I don't think it's something anyone should overlook when buying an old BMW. However, this video is only talking about the purchase, not about the expenses that follow. So buyer beware. An E46 puts around 330 to 338 horsepower, but that depends on whether you have the US or European version. There are a lot of other performance differences, but they are very subtle for the most part. The US version is the one that is lacking slightly when compared to its European brethren but that doesn't make it any less enjoyable. At the end of the day, a BMW M3 is still a very nice iconic car and its status still commands a lot of respect in the car world. With how cheap some of these are becoming, it's becoming easier and easier for younger buyers to get hold of one and get immersed into car culture. This entry is the naturally aspirated model, but you can also find turbo models for a couple thousand more. However, a V12 is troublesome enough, so with turbos, it's not unusual for it to have more problems than the NA version. Not that the NA version won't still put a dent in your wallet, but who cares? It's a V12! The 2001-2003 models have a 5.8 liter V12 that is putting 362 horsepower, whereas the 2004-2006 models feature a 5.5 liter V12 that is putting out 493 horsepower. The 2004-2006 models are closer to 10 grand, whereas the 2001-2003 models can be as cheap as 4 grand even. Either way, you'll be paying a fraction of the price compared to when the car was brand new. Don't expect this car to do you any deeds on a track, as it's a total boat and weighs well over 4,000 pounds. The 2004-2008 Audi S4s are packing a very healthy 4.2 liter V8 that puts out 340 horsepower. I love me a good V8. Sure, I may love American V8s more, but I like to keep an open mind, and this S4 is living proof as to why. With 340 horsepower and all-wheel drive, this S4 achieves a 0-60 time of 4.8 seconds, which is really fast for a car that you've paid less than 10 grand for. The S4 is meant to be a high-performance variant of the A4, so power isn't the only upgrade it features. The S4 also has upgraded brakes, suspension, and a sportier interior. Sure, you can buy a boring A4 for cheaper that will probably be more reliable, and hell, if you're a high schooler, you probably should. However, if you believe yourself to be a moderately responsible adult and you're craving more speed, then you'll be in for a pleasant treat. This is for all my hatchback lovers. Do I think the 4th generation one still looks better than this one? Of course, and I'm sure the majority of people do as well. However, this is the most modern entry on this list and with a more modern car comes more modern features. And I'm not just talking about power. However, who the hell cares about anything but power? So let's talk about that. The GTI features a turbocharged 2 liter 4 cylinder engine that is putting out 200 horsepower. It weighs just under 3000 pounds when dry, so it's slightly heavier than the previous generation. This car isn't fast right from the factory, but its strength lies in the aftermarket. The GTI has an extensive aftermarket community, so it has a lot of untapped potential just waiting to be released. 
This car is fairly reliable, especially when compared to the other entries on this list. However, since it's reliable, that means that all the money you've budgeted out for fixing the other entries on this list can instead be used to buy aftermarket parts if you choose this entry. I see a decent amount of these here on campus, so if I had to recommend a car from this list to younger viewers, it'd be this one. It won't give you a headache, and even if you decide to drive it bone stock, it's still a nimble and fun car to toss about whenever you can. The Saab 9.3 Turbo X is quite the wild card. It's not a very known car, especially here in the States. And I was waiting for a perfect opportunity to mention it in a video. So here it is. The 9.3 Turbo X features a turbocharged 2.8 liter V6 that is putting out 280 horsepower. It's not an extremely high number by any means, but something about it being a Saab just fills the void in my heart. Not a lot of people think much of Saab now that they faded into obscurity here in the United States. But this 9.3 really showed that even in their numbered days, they were willing to experiment around, something that a lot of modern manufacturers seem to lack. The car features a cross-wheel drive system, which is an advanced all-wheel drive system with ELSD. Some people argue that it is closer to four-wheel drive than it is to all-wheel drive, or vice versa. I'm no expert, so debate away in the comments. This car can be found at just around 10 grand, but they come and go pretty quickly as they seem to be bought out right as they enter the used market. If you got your heart set on this car, keep a sharp eye on the lookout. Oh, and you know how the Ford Model T only came in black? So does this car, so you better like the color black. If you love these videos and find them helpful, then I'm glad you did and I enjoy making them. However, if you loathe seeing a barrage of uploads about cheap cars, then fear not, for I am planning on making videos over the next few days that cater to the more exquisite buyers. Make sure to check out my Forgotten Supercars videos about the Vector M12. Also, try not to get overly sad like I did while making that video. I seriously had no idea how bad Vector's history was. If you like automotive and gaming, then subscribe to my channel for regular uploads. Like this video and share it with friends. Thanks for watching. Blade Angel out.